From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm Benjamin Shapiro, the executive producer of the MarTech Podcast, and today we've got a special episode for you, which is going to be guest hosted by Juan Mendoza, the author of the MarTech Weekly Newsletter. Juan is a recovering MarTech consultant turned creator who writes an amazing weekly newsletter about the MarTech industry. And I'm thrilled to invite him and some of his friends to take the mic and share their knowledge with you, our loyal MarTech Podcast listeners. All right, here's a special episode of the MarTech Podcast, guest hosted by Juan Mendoza, the author of the MarTech Weekly Newsletter. Hello, MarTechers. My name is Juan Mendoza from the MarTech Weekly. And this week, we're going to discuss the intriguing debate between automation and creativity, dissecting the significance of each in modern business strategies and their symbolic role in driving innovation and efficiency. Joining me is Vishal Sood. He's the head of product at Typeface which is the first of its kind and one of the first companies on the scene building generative AI for marketing technologies specifically. They are building an AI platform to deliver unique on-brand content, think images, social media posts, graphics, blogs, job listings, product listings, and more designed specifically for enterprise implementation. This generative AI platform is built around using a personalized AI core and delivers a powerful suite of secure self-serve solutions that uniquely addresses enterprises' needs, serving the different divisions within an enterprise from marketing, sales, and HR, to name a few. Definitely an impressive product and a lot to unpack there around what they're doing with generative AI and applying it to marketing use cases. So today, Vishal and I are going to discuss, well, automation and creativity. Which one is more important in this incredible world we're living in where so much of content can be generated with automation? Okay, here's my conversation with Vishal Sood, the head of product at Typeface. Hey, Vishal, how are you doing? Hey, Juan. Very nice to be here. I'm a big fan of the show, so look forward to this conversation. It's kind of very top of the mind for us, so excited about this. You must be so exhausted. We were just talking before we recorded that you launched in February and it must have been an unbelievable year for you folks, building a software platform around generative AI for marketers. Tell us, what's it been like with this incredible new technology and really grappling with making it useful for marketers? Yeah, it's been very, very exciting time, one. Like, as you can imagine, I, I think this is the pace at which innovation is happening in this space is unlike anything we have seen in the past. It's just the profound way both the market, the marketing domain is kind of adapting this technology and also the way the technology is moving and changing every day. Like, I don't think I, there's a day you wake up where there's a five new demos that show up on various social media channels and then you are left kind of wondering which of those are real, which of those need to be gone deeper on, but you just just keeping you on your toes all the time. So it's very, very exciting. And I think there's a lot of potential in this space. I think it's so new that there's almost unlimited opportunity, I think, because you could literally build a platform, build a company, you know, leverage some of these large language models in unique ways. And it, right now, it's just, a, I would say, it's almost like a gold rush. It's all these companies, thousands of companies have started this year around the promise of generative AI. But you're working on the intersection between making marketers more creative by using these automation tools, these generative AI tools. So perhaps before we get into this topic, and if our audience may not be fully aware, but how do you define generative AI? What does that look like to you? So if you think about it, like most of us kind of are telling stories one way or the other, and to tell our stories or to get our message out there, you need content. And generative AI for the very first time is kind of a way to create content with the help of a computer, right? Essentially, like, so how do you do this? But at the same time, how do you help the person telling the story tell their story, not just a generic story? 
has been kind of what typeface the journey typeface has been on and for us it's all about how do we generate on brand personalized content at scale so you and your company can tell your message and that's kind of what it's all about for us that's very interesting so when we talk about creativity and the internet made marketers way more creative i think in a lot of ways they all of a sudden they had access to all these new channels very different dynamics no longer we're just dealing with billboards and tvc and your traditional channels the internet brought a whole new landscape of just incredible canvas of creativity but when it comes to the generative ai aspect it brings a lot of different unique challenges because marketers and the marketers particularly in the creative side of marketing which is copywriting design campaign strategy like all of that creative element all of that is something that marketers really love but generative ai offers this opportunity to automate a lot of those tasks so how do you strike that balance between automating the creative part of marketing and marketers actually wanting to embrace that creativity for themselves one thing as we started building the company we started talking to several pretty key marketers cmos and other audiences out there and what we realized is and this is i think i'm just going to step back a little bit and I'll come and answer your question because what we realized is there are two broad ways most companies create content one which we internally called a brand loop so the idea there is this is the content you put on your website the billboards and stuff like that it's very much on pixel perfect content in terms of creative on brand messaging and usually some kind of an agency gets involved whether it's your in-house agency or an external agency and this kind of brand loop is where predominantly most of the content that is central to an organization gets created but as you were saying on the other end of the spectrum what we are realizing is there is so many channels and some of these topics on these channels change by the hour they don't even change by the days so even if you had all the time and all the money to kind of do this on brand content you just didn't have the velocity to go target all these channels in a timely manner right so what people end up doing is they start writing copy themselves so to put a message out there or they start taking a stock photography image and just putting it out there now the benefit of doing that which we call velocity loop is that you can actually generate content really fast but then you end up compromising your brand and these two worlds which is the brand loop and the velocity loop for us we see are largely disconnected in most organization so now and something similar was happening in the data space right you had so many databases if you look back 10 years ago and then snowflake databricks kind of technologies came about and they said now wherever your data is you can just query it from a central place we believe generative ai for the very first time is a piece of technology that allows us to bring these two loops together so now when it go and i go back to your creativity versus automation i don't think this the whole premise of generative ai at least the way our, our world view on generative ai is is going to become all automation and and it's just going to kill the creativity is actually an and for us this brand loop the content will actually get created the way it gets created today for the most part yeah it might get more efficient it might get a little bit faster but then all of this velocity loop which is where you need to really go out there with a quick message how do you make that be more on brand and how do you automate that across all the geographies and the personalization that you need for all of these channels that's where i think automation fits in very very nicely so how do you learn from your existing content and help you create other content faster and then the role of creativity is comes to various different ways so you one way is you express your creativity in terms of rules and stuff like that which can be used for automation but then the whole layer about human intuition and human creativity is kind of guiding all of that at any point of time and then you're also looking at the output also one last time before you put it out there so so it's pretty much a combination of human and automation and i think it depends on what kind of content you are doing it for one of the things i think was really quite exciting about generative ai is that it gives you the ability to create iterations or versions of content without all the manual heavy lifting of trying to do that yourself the creativity aspect say the idea or the campaign idea or the copy or even the illustration and design for imagery and different products or websites and also campaigns all of that stuff is the idea is what matters and then you may want to create iterations or versions of that for like say specific markets or specific types of cohorts of customers and to do those versions particularly in personalization it is extremely hard right because you can look at hundreds of versions depending on how big your customer base is that you want to just tweak a little bit not a lot but just take the same idea and tweak it just slightly so it's a little bit more relevant to each user and so do you see a lot of that in what you're doing is that it helps speed up that process of making those versions or those iterations on say a single content idea 
Yes, exactly right. So I think one of our customers, which we have kind of publicly talked about them, is LG. So LG is in 90 plus markets. So obviously the kind of messaging you put in one country is very different than the kind of messaging you put in another country. So if you look at the anatomy of this messaging, there is probably a central kind of a brand voice that you always want to be true to. But then there is a bunch of localization and contextualization that you need to do based on the geography or the person you're talking to. And that is a great use case of how do you kind of balance both of them, right? A person can't write all those copies because they may not even have all that context from all these locations. But if a person can actually write a set of copy and then take something like generative AI to kind of go target 90 different markets with the nuances for each of those markets, that's kind of what we're talking about, where the creativity and automation kind of go hand in hand. So you're absolutely right. That's been a use case that we have seen getting a lot of traction with our customers. Yeah, I can imagine it saves a lot of time. And the irony of that almost is that taking time, automating a lot of those small incremental iterations, a lot of that is just time you could spend creating stuff. So it actually frees up marketers to actually do more creative work or spend more time in that ideation, freeform, creative phase in uh, marketing strategies. So that's probably the one of the really exciting use cases that it may save marketers a lot of time just in a lot of that content versioning. The other way I think about this sort of four layers in generative AI in the content production cycle. So there's like ideation. For example, you can use a lot of Gen AI, ChatGPT and others to give you ideas for campaigns. Oh, you know, we're wanting to do this and maybe we'll give you a list of things to do, maybe for some research or to give you a sketch of an image, say for a, just a, a pitch for a campaign or something like that. That ideation sort of feeds into conceptualization. Okay, what's this actually going to do? Gen AI can write copy for you now. It can design products. It can do image iteration and like give you versions so you can conceptualize a specific strategy. Then moving into refinement, then you refine your content. It gives you feedback. You can upscale and make those changes to images. You can summarize things as well. Say you have a podcast and you want to have a summarized version of that. You can do that with generative AI. And lastly, production getting those assets managed and then versioned and then also into market as well. And so across that supply chain, where does typeface fit? Are you guys in the ideation space or more sort of towards the bottom there where you're helping, helping marketers refine and do the production aspect of generative AI? I was kind of smiling when I was hearing you talk about it, one because those are I mean, they're very, very nicely said. And actually typeface plays in all of those in a very different set of ways. So I'll talk about that a little bit. So I think let's just say you own a CPG product and now you're trying to put a campaign for that. And it could be a shaving form, for example, right? And if you go to generative AI today and you try to go to any of the image generation software and say, give me an image of a name your product shaving form. And then what you will get out of it is your prompt will be very much honored, but your product will be completely missing. So it's kind of very hard to then at that point of time imagine your product in those situations. So especially when we talked about the brand loop, that's where the ideation comes in quite a bit. So one of the things Typeface can do really well is keep your product details completely intact. So you can actually get to zero to 60% of the image really, really fast and save a lot of time which you have spent back and forth with the internal or external agency or your creative partner in terms of just getting to the 60%. And now, once you have narrowed down on that, now your creative partner can really pick it up and actually really go ahead and do a much, much faster loop to get you that content. So in the ideation phase, Typeface kind of becomes your ideation partner. And it, at that point of time, it helps you be much more efficient and, and do a lot more with your time, as you rightly pointed out. So that's kind of the, just the first part of the journey. Now, there are other use cases, like this was one use case is, okay, I actually have, I think you mentioned the refinement as a use case. I actually have, let's just say, we're recording this podcast. Now, let's assume that this podcast goes well and people start liking it. And you might say, oh, I want to put a newsletter out with some summary from this podcast. Or you might just say, I want to write a blog post with the summary from this podcast. So now all of these is where zero to one of the content exists. But now you need to take one to hundred. Like what I mean by that is N different channels, M different audiences per channels. Now, Typeface can actually help you that. So we have a template called Text Blend. What it does is it can take any kind of input and then help you write output for the particular channel and for a particular audience segment. And then you can just look at it and just quickly refine it, or do a human in the loop essentially on it and put it out there. So one of our customers actually who uses this template a lot. Their question was, I am a copywriter, but this now allows me to be copy editor instead of copywriter. And now I can do a lot more just by taking that leap. And it's still informed by the first copy I wrote or some credible source wrote for me. 
So that's an example of a very big role in that kind of a side. Tell me about production because, I mean, that's the really fascinating part of generative AI is making it easier to get this stuff into channels and to for really get it, the assets finalized. Yes, exactly right. So I think then if you look at it, there are many different reasons why you might be going into production. Like let's say you're a performance marketer, you are sending emails. So today, as I said earlier, given the data systems have evolved so much, now I can create very fine-grained audience segments in my system. It's very easy for me to do it. To the extent that at some point of time we are approaching a one-to-one -one personalization, still a little bit away, but I'll talk about, we can talk about that later. But I think from this purpose now, if you take something like typeface and you give it a message and say, now go integrate with my customer data platform, like a CDP, where my audiences are defined. And for every audience, use the audience characteristics and now create a personalized message at scale for me so that I can then automate some of my email comments. So the first version of the email came from you, but all the personalization for all these audience segments was done by keeping the data characteristics and the audience characteristics that usually sit in some kind of a marketing automation system. So now you can do a lot more personalized email. Earlier, what you would do is you could create audience segments, but then you will be limited by the amount of content you can create. Once again, one of our customers was like, what generative AI helps them do is, so there are various different things generative AI can help them do, but one thing they were very clear about is there were a lot of things which I don't do today because they are very hard to do or they're almost impossible to do. So this is an example of which is kind of approaching almost impossible to do is you can't humanly write so many different variations of the email, but you can definitely write one to express your creativity, which is what we were talking about earlier. And then say, okay, now combine this with the data characteristics of the person we are trying to reach to and create variations of that. And then I can come in as a copy editor to the other quote we talked about earlier, take a quick look at it, and then we can have the orchestration system send it out. That's just one example, social media ads, where I want to retain my product, I want to retain my brand styles, but I still want to put an ad out there in my own brand tone and voice. All those are kind of great examples of how you can really scale at production with generative AI. And our customers are doing that already. There is so many things happening there, but I did want to touch on quickly, how are different industries reacting to these tools? You mentioned that you worked with LG and a number of brands across different regions and different types of verticals as well. How are different types of brands reacting to this? What are they saying is the value for them? This is very much top of the mind for everybody. And everybody is trying to figure out how do they adopt generative AI. The four broad themes from we are hearing repeatedly from customers are one, how do they kind of work with the best in class models? There are quite a few models out there. I mean, each does something unique, like just kind of how do they stay on top of it has been a constant challenge for them. So they want a solution to kind of help them do that because these models are really evolving very fast. What was impossible today is going to be like just a norm tomorrow, right? So that's one thing. The second thing is, if I go to a generative AI system and I go ask for a blog post on a particular topic and my neighbor goes and does the same thing, how do I get a very unique version of that blog post which incorporates deep personalization? It understands my brand voice, understands my tone. It understands the author who's writing it and how do we do that? So that's kind of the very second big question because they're worried about the fact that everybody's, going to, everybody's copy is going to look the same and then where is my differentiation, right? So this deep personalization and how are they able to do that? is the second point we hear very repeatedly. The third is IP. Who owns the IP to this content? How do I ensure that if I give my IP to a system, it's not going to go into public domain and help everybody get better at writing blog posts the way I write blog posts or ads the way I write ads? How do I not lose my voice and how do I not lose my data, which is crown jewel for me? And the last thing is integrated workflow, which is what we were talking about earlier also. Like if you, I think there was a survey from HubSpot, a marketing and on average uses 15 different MarTech tools in their kind of uh, daily lives, right? So they don't want a 16 tool or a 17 tool or an 18 tool. What they want is those 15 tools to get better, right? So how does AI integrate into existing workflows and reach the users where they already are and help them kind of do better in the tools they're already in? And these four problems are roughly the four main problems that Typeface is looking to solve. So we basically, I mean, IP, I'll start with the IP because that's definitely top of the mind for people. So we guarantee any data you share with Typeface is not going to make it back into the public domain. We actually help to own your brand voice from your existing assets, your existing products from your existing product catalogs, and then represent them in the outputs. We stay, we are a multi-model solution. So we work with the best in class models out there. And finally, we are integrated into Salesforce, Google Docs, Microsoft ecosystem, Google Ads ecosystem, so we can, through that, reach users where they are. There is just a world of opportunity here. 
And I think that's our takeaway is, well, creativity and automation, in a lot of ways, automation should allow free up marketers to have more time and more headspace to do that ideation and that real divergent thinking and work on coming up with the next big idea. But it does stretch across the entire pipeline. It's not just production and versioning of assets and, and imagery and content. It's also the ideation aspect as well. So that wraps up our first MarTech podcast episode with Vishal. Thank you to Vishal Seward. He's the head of product of Typeface for joining us. In part two of our interview tomorrow, Vishal and I, we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to talk about what level of content personalization can we expect from generative AI. If you can't wait till the next episode, you'll like to learn more about Vishal. You can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes and you can contact him on Twitter where his handle is Vishal Sood or at his company website at typeface.ai. Vishal, thanks for joining us for a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much, Juan. I look forward to watch tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks to our guest host, Juan Mendoza, the author of the MarTech Weekly Newsletter. If you'd like to get in touch with Juan, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Juan Mendoza, but it's spelled crazy pants. It's J-U-4-N. M-E-N-D-0-Z-4, -Z or it's a little easier to just visit his company's website, which is themartechweekly.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com, where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletters, and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Schaap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app, and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.